Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Um, I don't know about you, but I come to magnify the Lord this morning. We serve such an, an awesome God. And so today I'm praying that in Facebook land and those who are who, whoever that is tapped in this morning, I'm praying that this morning has um, been an awesome morning for you this morning already. I'm, I'm praying that you have already gotten up and and you have prepared to um, not just hear a word, but prepare to be a blessing, um, prepare to give God the praise, prepare to worship God with with the with the truth and, and the holiness that you have inside you. Um, I'm praying that you are uh, intentional in your walk today, that you have something in you that's saying, I'm going to go out here into the highways and the, and the uh, byways, and I'm, I'm going to go into the highways and the hedges, Lord, and I'm going to pull somebody in. I'm going to draw them in, Lord, that they may know you. And so I'm hoping that you have that attitude this morning. Um, you know, you, I hope you got an attitude of gratitude because God has yet woke you up another morning. Um, many people did not make it. Many people didn't make it this week. They didn't make it this morning. But God, if if you have if you have woken your you opened your eyes, even if you haven't opened your eyes and you are able to hear right now what the Lord is saying to you, you still have an opportunity to get it right before Him. And so this morning, I just wanted to come and, and drop a few nuggets with God has put on my heart. And we went through this revival, and I'm gonna say went through, but we we this revival this week was such an awesome time of unity, uh, an awesome time of us to come together. We had a, Apostle Wesley that came over and this man really uh, took some time and really um, edified the body of Christ. And so then we had the beach, taking the beach to the streets yesterday. We had a, a lot of artists that came out and I don't want to say all the names because I don't want to forget the names of some of the groups that have come out. But I just wanted to say we we are still yet going beyond the four walls and we're ministering into these streets over here in KCK and even in Kansas City, Missouri. And so I thank God for what he is doing with us and through us. And so I'm going to get off my soapbox, but I just thank God. And so, again, I'm always bringing glad tidings from the House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, where my pastor is Bernard Crawford Jr. and his wife, our First Lady, uh, Prophetess Trina Crawford. Uh, we have great other we have other great leaders, and so I just wanted to honor them, um, our, our other pastors and ministers, and and all the deacons and all those other leaders that are um, part uh, part of this ministry that is making sure that we maintain um, what God has called us to do. And so I just thank God for that. Uh, today, uh, before our prayer, I just wanted to say that uh, today's lesson, as we go higher and higher, uh, I just want us to think about what God has done and what he is doing. Um, the nugget and the thought that he gave me today was certified by Christ. I want you to put that in your spirit, certified by Christ. Um, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for um, you just being um, God and God alone, and you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are um, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tishkenu, you are Jehovah uh, Shama, you are Jehovah Nisi, you are all that and, uh, and above all of those things, Lord. And so we thank you. We thank you that you have not forgotten us. You have not forsaken us, Lord, and you have looked beyond our faults and you have seen our needs. You said you would supply our, our needs according to your riches, Lord. You said that you would never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, and you have continuously kept your promise with us. And so we thank you. Well, we thank you that you have continuously look beyond again our faults i have to say that again and see our needs lord uh, we are so faulty in our ways lord even when we try to be right even when you told us even our our, our greatest righteousness the things that we do that is, that we feel we call ourselves the best lord you said it's like dirty dirty rags before you and so we know that we can never outgive. We know we can never be as great as you. But we thank you, Lord, that you look beyond all of those other things, God, and you've seen us and you have supplied us for what we need. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for sending your only begotten son, how you have if you, you allowed him to take on our sins and bury them, Lord, that we may not have to die. We didn't have to die in our sin. And so we thank you. And again, we thank you for this morning, for this time to be able to fellowship with one another, um, Lord, and able to glorify your name. 
We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Again, this morning, certified by Christ. Um, when I think about the word certified, or when I look at when I'm riding up the street, or when I'm at work, or when I'm in different places, and when I see the word certified, um, many times I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at like, what does that mean? You know, because it's on so many billboards, it's on so many stamps, it's on so many things, and sometimes we look at it, but do we really honestly understand what certified means? And so not just that, but to be certified by Christ should really mean something. And so when I'm looking at this message of what God has given us, today, certified by Christ, when we look at the word certified, it means to be officially recognized as possessing certain qualifications or meeting certain standards. Let me read that again. Um, it means, the word certified means to be officially recognized as possessing certain qualifications or meeting certain standards. And so when we put certified and we put Christ behind it, that means he has put the stamp of approval on you. That means there is something that he has called you to. That means you have possessed certain qualifications. You have met the standards of Christ. Now, again, I just, we just, you know, we, we look back and we say, man, I've done so many bad things. My life is not what, even where I yet want to be, but yet he had preordained you and he has certified us. And again, to do a certain work. Well, in this, when we look at this, this certification and we look at what that does, it means you have been validated. That means it has been confirmed. That means you have been approved. That means it has been authorized for you to do a certain work in the kingdom. Somebody should be smiling right now. Somebody should be, woohoo! Somebody should be worshiping. Somebody should be ecstatic. Somebody should be excited about what God is doing in your life. So when we look at this word and we look at certified by Christ, that is major. The deal with, with this word is, is, and when we look at this, the certifications, there are so many things and so many giftings and so many things that he has done in our lives. He has already done it even before you were born. It has already been preordained for you to do. Well, guess what? He has already brought, look, those who have already given your life. Now, I'm talking to the believers right now because um, those that don't believe right now, not that you are not called or not that you are preordained, but you have not yet taken on what God has called you to. So you can't walk in and you can't be approved in certain areas. It's just like when you go to get a loan, when you go into the bank to get a loan, a lot of times there are certain qualifications that you have to have for them to approve you for the loan. So you can't be certified or put in that place until you have done what you've called to do. And that's why when we look at certain scriptures, you know, like this one here, um, and I love this scripture. When we look at Romans 8 and 30. Now, I love this because my pastor always says this. This is one of his known statements. He says, uh, always, he always tells us, look, he didn't call us to sit, but he called us to serve. So when we look at this scripture in, in Romans 8 and 30, it says, and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he had called, he also justified. And that means if when we look at the word justified, it means declare free of guilt and of sin. And those who he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. And so when we look at this word and we look at what is going on, unless you take on and choose to to take on what God has given you, then you can't do what God has called you to do. That's why I said that many are called, but few are chosen because many have rejected the gospel. And so that's the key. The key is, is 
the certification is given and is preordained. So even when I talked about how when you go to a bank and they have to certify you and approve you, the greatest thing about the Lord is, which, which makes him different than any person or anything that you will ever go, up, uh, go against or go in front of, is he can pre-qualify you before you have anything. You can have, you can, your credit score can be five and still get a home with, with Jesus. That means you can go and get a car, you can go and get a house, you can do whatever that you want to do when God has certified you. When he has done it, no man or nothing can stop you. The deal is, is we have to make the choice to choose him. That's why it says, many are called, but few are chosen. There are many are called even to the gospel. And when you look at the scripture, when we go back and we look at, even in Matthew 22 and 14, when we look at the scripture and it says, when it talks about the, the, the many are called and few are chosen, it's talking about the Jews first and then the Gentiles. But now it even lines up with us now because it started with the Jews because Jesus, where he was from, he had chose those that were in his, in his clan. In other words, those that were with him, he chose to get them and to teach them first. But when they rejected the gospel, then next was the Gentiles. That means the ones that were pushed aside, the ones that were looked down on, had an opportunity also to be able to be a partaker of the kingdom of God. And so in that, those also, that if they took on, then guess what? They become one with Christ. But the others that rejected him have gone. So they were, many were called into the fold, but only few were chosen because the people who were chosen also had to choose God. But there are many also that are preordained. In other words, there are many that are also called even from the belly, from the womb, to do a certain work. Or are you that person today? And the way that we can find out is, 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 is our walk and our calling. And, and, and the only other way is, is for us to line up and for us to hear from God. We want to know what is, what is our calling? What has God called us? He certified you, but what am I called to do in this certification? He approved you to do a work, but what am I approved to do? And so today, there are, there's, I got three nuggets these nuggets are, and, and, and I'm going to say pretty, I'm, I'm going to say simple to do, but they're simple because this is not a word that, that's, you know, like a theologian would come with. This is a word, this a simple word and things that we can do to do what God has called us to do. Okay, so when we look at this, if you are certified, there are three things that God had called us to do. One of the first things that he called us to is in Matthew 22 and 37. And it tells us that thou shall love the Lord with thy, with, it says, love thy God with thy own heart. It says, and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And, and it said, and that is with all the powers and the faculties of your soul. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible that the will and the understanding and the affections in the most sincere, upright, and perfect manner without any deceit or lying. So when we look at this particular scripture and we look at this, it says, thou shalt not love, it says, I'm sorry, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy power. So in that, that means one of the first things that we must do is we must, we must love him with a heart, with, with, I'm talking about with a great, the greatest passion that you can have. In other words, our job is to love because he's letting us know that if we can love God, uh, 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 one who we've not seen, then that means we should be able to love our neighbor, the ones that we have seen. See, a lot of times we flip it. It's hard for us. It's, it's easy for most people to try to love the person that you see, but the person that's negative or, per, or people that come against you, you don't want to love. So he's letting us know, look, love me, the one who you haven't seen, which means if you practice in that, that means it's easy for you to go and be able to minister and to love the one that you don't know. Your neighbor is not always the one that you know. In other words, the person that lives next door to you that's always bringing you food or the one who helps you cut your grass or shovels your snow or the person that you speak to, that's not always your neighbor. 
Your neighbor is that person that you see as you walk, that person that you go to, you go to um, church with, that person that you go to, uh, when you go to your job and you don't know, that person when you go to school, that person that you never met before, it's still your neighbor because why? Because he walked with you. These people that you see that you uh, walk past each day are still your neighbors. And these people are, are folks that you should love like you love God. And so he's saying, look, love with your whole heart. He's saying love with your, with your heart, your mind, and your soul. That means any and everything that you have in you, we must love to another level. And that's why in this, in this same thing, when I looked into the commentary and I kind of read up on it, it says with the faculties of your soul and the will and the understanding and the affections, that means everything that's in you with sincere and upright, per perfect manner without any deceit or lying. So it's letting us know that we must love with the whole core of our bodies. That means any and everything with us. And so this is what makes it hard for many. And that's why it says the certified, the approved, because when he called you, he also called you, he preordained you for work. And in this work, we're going to have to love many. You're going to have to love the brother or sister that you don't care for. You might not like the things that they do, but we have to love them because why? Because they are still of God. And even the ones that are our enemies, it tells us to love thy enemy. So it's letting us know that we still have to extend ourselves further than we go. One of the things that I'm learning right now is even in my giving, I feel like I'm doing better and I'm really trying to give from the heart. Not just, I don't, I don't want to be the person that I'm, I'm giving or doing for a person so somebody can see me do. I want to be able to do and be able to help someone because I believe it's important, but I believe God has called me into doing this. There's so many things that he has given us to do. He is, he is teaching us how to steward, but he's also teaching us how to give beyond ourselves. Give beyond your feelings of how you feel. So many of people, and so, and I've been tested. I've been tested and I'm still being tested on it because many a times now I'm getting people that's coming out of woodwork. Hey, can you do this or can you do that? And now I'm looking at them like, man, did I really want to do this? But I'm called. I believe God has called me and he's certified and he confirmed the calling. And so I have to still do and I have to love God with all my heart. But I have to really do what he the same thing that God would do is we need to imitate. We need to make sure that we are the mirrors of God. And so that's what I want to do. And so when you are called and you're certified, these are that's the walk of, of Christ. That's what we must do. When you look at the walk of Christ, Christ had walked into many a places and he laid hands and he and he done miracles and, and people spit and they mocked him and they dogged him out and they said things about him. But he continued to do the work because he was certified. He was himself certified to do the work of God. And so we are the same. And so the second part of this, and again, the greatest part about this, these are the greatest of his commandments. These two things that I'm talking about today, the first thing is, is here in Matthew 22 and 37. This is the two of the, of the things that he said, out of, of all things, these are my greatest commandments. The second thing is, when you're certified, is in Matthew 22 and 39, love your neighbor. I just talked about that. But we love the neighbor as ourselves. And, and, and this, this is the second greatest commandment. Now, why, why are these two things the greatest of the commandments? Because in this, it covers everything. If you love and you do what he has called you to do, it covers all of the commandments. But when we don't, we fail. And it already tells us that if we don't do one of the commandments, we already have failed. And so these two things are the, one of the greatest because first we have to love God. The other things, we must love man. We must love the mankind. We must love what he has created. So we must love our brothers. And so there is a, a thing that, that we call a self-love. And so this is what makes it hard. So we have a self-love, which is more of an arrogance. 
And so what happens is it's hard for us to love our neighbor because we have a self-love. In other words, we're so arrogant that we can't love someone else because we, we put ourselves up higher than we do anything or anybody. And the scripture tells us is that we, we sometimes we have to allow ourselves to love others and put ourselves second to others. And so that's our calling. And so when he certifies you, he has called you and called us that we must love our neighbor, but to humble ourselves. In other words, put ourselves down that we may lift someone else up. And that's what he's called us to do. And so that arrogance is a corrupt type of thing. It is it's corrupt. And so it is the root of the greatest sins. I didn't say sin of the greatest sins. Now, let's go back. When we look at Satan, Satan was arrogant. They, they, the scripture lets us know that, that Satan was beautiful. And he not just beautiful, but he was a great, he had a grace, he had a great voice. And so he was one who would usher, when he was in heaven, he would usher in God. He would usher him into the place with his voice. And so when he would usher in God, he felt like, look, I'm doing this and I look good. You know, and I'm just I'm just putting it in, into where we are now. I look good. I sound good. Why am I not getting? Why am I, am I not getting the praise and the worship that God is getting? And so what happened is, is he started loving himself more than anything. And so it got to a place where God had to kick him out of heaven. When he kicked him out of heaven, this same arrogant person had put on, he had also had put on so much arrogance that he drew three. Now, God knew what he would do, but he threw one third of the angels went with him. So when we look at this and we look at what happens is this is a multitude of sins that he had has from the arrogance. All the sins that you can think of is what he had in him. And so this is why it is a root of great corrupt when we can't love our neighbor. When we love ourselves and we can't love our neighbors as ourselves, there's a problem. But one of the great things that he has done is he has given us another type of self-love. And this self-love, is it, it rules and it's the, one of the greatest duties because what it does is it, it has a concern. It makes you have a concern for the welfare of others of their souls and their bodies. In other words, when you see a person and they're not in great shape and in health, for us, when you love your neighbor, you're willing to go and to help feed them. You're willing to help them that if they can't get across the street, you're willing to help pick them up or to grab hold to them to get them to the next place. And so this is what we call a self-love where when you love yourself, and you look at yourself and you say, look, this is the way that I love myself is the same way that I want to love my neighbor and also that I want to be treated. So I love my, you know, and so it tells us even in scripture that when we do others and when we do, look, we want treat others how we want to be treated. And so in this certification, as we are certified by Christ, our duty and our job is to love beyond ourselves. Sometimes we have to put ourselves second in my household. I've learned as a father that if it's food in the kitchen and if it's five portions and, and it was six of us, well, it was seven of us because five kids and two adults, I had to make sure that everybody else ate first and then whatever's left, then I'll eat because I'm going to find something to eat. I'm going to make sure that I get me something, but I'm going to make sure my family is fed first. It's the same principle that we need to do as neighbors. We need to make sure that they have. Do y'all remember the times? You know, I remember growing up in Parker Square on 12th Street. I remember being in a place where we would share. We would knock on the door. They would knock on our door. We would ask for sugar. They had no problem. We asked for milk. They, we had no problem. They would come and ask for bread. There was no problem. Why? Because we loved our neighbors. We had no problem with, 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 with helping and feeding one another. There was no problem for a friend to come over and say, hey, uh, my shoes are tore up. Can I wear some of yours? And so that, that is the thing that we have to get back to. We have to we have way more than we did when we were coming up. I know I did. So why can't we love our neighbor? Why can't we give back to those same people? 
And so that's what, what God is called. That's what makes it hard for the call and the chosen. Because many are called, but when they're called, it reminds me of the young rich ruler. It's, many are called to do a work, but when it comes to giving your money away, when it comes to giving your life, when it comes to giving these things, people back off. So the young rich ruler was given the task to look, give everything away and follow me. Now, if God tells you to give everything away and follow him, that means he has more in store for you. The problem is, is he was called, but he chose not to, to really choose God because he didn't want to give up his possessions. And that's where we are today. We, we, we don't want to give up ourselves. We don't want to give to a point where we feel like it's going to affect us. It's not going to affect you. It's not, it's not going to do nothing but build you up. You think that you can, you can outgive God? You think you're going to be able to give and he's not going to maintain you or, or fulfill your needs? That's what God does. And so this is why those two major parts, those two commandments, those are two, the two greatest commandments is to love God with all the heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the other part is to love thy neighbor. The last thing that I want to talk about is, is once you have done this and you have gotten this element in you and you have really taken on what God has called you to do, Matthew 28, 19 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That means help the people to learn God and to believe in God and to obey God and God's word. And that means baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or back in the day, we say the Holy Ghost. And so in this, we are called and you're certified. That means you have been, it's been confirmed that you are one of his. And because we are one of his, that means he has called us now now that we have loved God with all our heart, our whole mind, heart, heart, soul, and strength, I'm sorry. And then also, if we love our neighbor, now he's saying, look, now, therefore, go beyond that. Now, let's go into the highways and the hedges. Let's go into the highways and the byways. Let's go out into all the, the world and preach the gospel. Therefore, let's go to the disciples. Let's go and make disciples. And, 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 and that means we're going into the nation. Not just Kansas City, not just Kansas, not Wichita, not all these other little states or cities. But he's saying, we're going beyond this. We're going to the nations and we're preaching the gospel. And we're also baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so in that, when we have this task, that's the problem. Many of us, we have the look. We want to do this thing. In other words, we want people to look at us and, and lift us up. But we don't want to go and do the hard work. We don't want to make the sacrifice of getting up early like we're doing as men here. We're getting up early and we had to get up and we had to put this tent together. It took us three hours. We had about 15 men to put this thing together. But the sacrifice is getting up after you don't worked all week and you get up and you make it. So it means if you got to be there six weeks, that means you up at five if you got some sense. And so you, we make it over, and I'm living in Missouri, so I'm coming over into Kansas. But guess what? It's, it's, it's worth it to get up, and we're coming in together. We're assembling as men, and we're uniting, and we're laughing, and we're joking. But the sacrifice is losing some sleep sometime or, you know, other things, you know, having some other things on your agenda. But when you're called, and not just called, but when you're chosen, you do the work of the Lord. How many of y'all are excited today about moving forward than just the calling? Don't you, many of us have the calling, but let's go and do what God has called us to do. You've been certified. God has stamped you with the approval to do what he's called you to do. And if he called you, that means he had, he had already predestined what he has for you. That means the power, the strength, the finances, whatever that thing that it might take for you to do, he has it there for you, for you to do. And that means he's going to push you and make sure that you get through what he has called you to. When you are certified by Christ, you are also chosen to make the decisions to stay committed to these three things. We give of our attempt. And when I say those three things, you know the three things. The three things is, is loving God. The other one is loving thy neighbor. And the other one is, is going, therefore, to, all the, to the nation, baptizing. 
And that means we're going into the nation and we're making disciples and we're baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we give up our attempt to control our own circumstances and we stay focused on him, allowing him to do the work and, and able to work through us uh, in, in every way that we allow him. So we have to allow God. That's the greatest thing about him. He doesn't want puppets. He doesn't want us to be people that he just makes us go and do. But we allow him because guess why? Because we are choosing to do what God has called us to do. And as I close, we can exhaust ourselves trying to control all of this. But it's, it's like a hamster wheel. We're just going round and round. You're just running. Because God holds the entire galaxy in his hands. So if we allow, if we give our control over to the Lord, and we allow him to work on us, then the purpose that he has for us will be fulfilled. You've been, many have been called, many, but few have been chosen because we have rejected, I'm going to say it again, we have rejected the gospel. How many today are going to receive the gospel? How many of us are not just going to receive it, but going to walk in it? This is a good time to walk in newness. This is a good time to walk in holiness and righteousness because it's still right. Holiness is still right. And so if you hear my voice and if, you, if, you, if you're out there in Facebook land, if you know someone, I'm asking you to tell someone about the goodness of the Lord. I don't care if you only got a little scripture. If you got John 3.16, preach John 3.16. If you got Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whatever that thing, that scripture is that's in your heart, let it resonate. Let it come up and let you preach it like, like, you, like you're preaching behind a pulpit. Let them know that God is still yet in control and he still loves them. This is what God is speaking today. We love you. House of Prayer. Uh, today, I just wanted to give a little uh, disclaimer as I'm closing. Well, not a disclaimer, but let you know what we're doing. We're on Quindaro today. Um, usually, we, we break the tent down uh, on a Saturday after the 9-11 event or what we'll say the beach to the streets. But today, they decided to go ahead and have service there in the tent uh, on Quindaro. And there's going to be a lot of different things going on on Quindaro today. But I'm hoping that if you, you're around, come drive through, pull through, come on up for service. Um, we're still distancing. We're still doing what God has called us to. But we definitely come together uniting as one that, that God may get the glory. Praise God. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you uh, for your certifications. We thank you that... Uh, we know that many are called, but few are chosen, Lord. And so we know that the harvest, even, even the harvest, there's many that, that will come from the harvest. But we know that the, the harvest is few also. But Lord, today we're asking God that you would begin a newness in us, that you would begin to uh, extend your hand to us. We love you, Lord. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen.